This video builds off of a previous video I did building a basic uh, wheel, image wheel carousel. You need to see that in order to get this video. I won't be going over all of that code in this video or this code. This video would be another 40 minutes longer. And so what makes this carousel so advanced? Well, snapping points. And so currently we have a snapping point at the 90 degree mark. When we spin the wheel, the wheel stops and it auto rotates back to that 90 degree mark. The active card enlarges and the other cards which are not active, they uh, they shrink down to I think a scale of 0 0.8 or 0 0.2 or whatever. Anyways, if this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. So let's start off by, what are we going to do? Let's do some variables first for the snapback functionality. We'll do that right here. What are we going to need? We're going to need to keep track of where the wheel is. So it's theta, it's rotation. So wheel theta is equal to 0, 0.0 for now. We'll need to keep track of, we need some sort of mechanism to know when we're done scrolling or when the wheel stops spinning so we can actually fire a snapback function. So we need a spin in progress. In progress, set that, should be a G. Set that to false, we'll need a snap in progress so we don't let the user spin while the wheel's animating on its own. So snap in progress. Set it to false, and we'll need a snapping point. So snap point, that'll be an object of an X. We'll set to zero for now, Y, set to zero for now, and a theta will set to zero for now. So let's get the, the functionality. So how do we know when the wheel stops spinning? I'm just gonna set a timeout. So set timeout. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna call a function call. That shouldn't be that. Here we go call a function called snap back snap underscore back Let me just write it up here very quickly so snap function snap back here we go and we'll set a timer of let's say, no, let's say two seconds just to test it and why is it doing this these are wrong this should be the curly braces and this should be the bracket. All right. So every time we spin the wheel, it's going to set a timer. If you spin the wheel 1,000 times or rotates 1,000 times, we're going to have 1,000 timers. We don't want that. We want to clear the timer every time the wheel spins except for that last spin. So we can say something like spin in progress, not snap, snap in progress. Spin in progress is equal to the timeout. And then we just need to clear that every time the, uh, the wheel spins. So clear timeout of the spin in progress. We'll save, we go back, and it's gonna fire this off. So let's just do this. Console.log and blah blah blah. There we go. Console. Spin the wheel. We wait two seconds. And it fires off. Spin the wheel again. Wait two seconds. And it should fire off. There we go. Let's reduce that to 100 milliseconds. See what we get. Spin the wheel. Wait 100 milliseconds. Perfect. So that's how we built in the snapback or the ability to know when the wheel stops spinning. So we can call it the snapback function. So let's start with the actual snapback then. How are we going to do the snapback stuff? Let me clear all this. That was supposed to be a perfect circle, but who cares? How do we know which card to snap back to? Well, let's say our snap being point is, we're gonna choose whatever point we want, but for the sake of this drawing, let's say it's 45 degrees. So the snapping point is 45 degrees. We rotate cards, whichever card is closest to this 45 degree mark, these are all the center of the, uh, the cards. So how do we know which card is closest to the 45 degrees? We need to test the distances between the snapping point in this card, snapping point in this card, snapping point in this card, this card, this card, this card, this card, this card. How do you get the this uh, the distance, these uh, the measurement of these lines? Just a bit of trigonometry. So if you have a snapping point, so this is the snapping point here, and we have a card that's maybe closest, is right here. How do you get the distance here? Well, if you construct a triangle like this, 
and this is the x, this is the y, this is the hypotenuse. If you take the square root of x squared plus y squared, you get the hypotenuse, the distance here. So it's going to create a loop. We're going to use this uh, Pythagorean theorem against all of these uh, possibilities. We're going to take the shortest, uh, what would you call this? The resolution, the shortest, uh, the shortest distance, and obviously that's the card that's closest to the snapping point. So we need to know the, the x and the y and the theta of the snapping point. Theta comes later, but for now we need the x and the y. So the x and the y of the snapping point. We'll build in the ability to pick whichever card we want as a snapping point. So we'll say something like group cards dot children, and we'll pick the let's pick the zero one two the ninety degree one. So children zero one two. We need to know its position dot x, and this guy should be the uh, the y position dot y. I'm just gonna floor these in case these are just uh, they're gonna be like decimal numbers to like. 10 spaces. I just want nice even numbers. I'm just going to say math.floor of this. I don't think it's really necessary, but this is how I wrote it when I successfully did it. So we got the x, we got the y. So we know the x and the y. We just need to create a loop and test out all of these distances. So we'll do that here in the snapback function. So we're just going to need a shortest distance. So how we Quickly, how are we going to know the, the x and the y here? We need to know the difference between. Let me draw it. Let me just stop talking and draw it. All right. So how do we know the x and the y of these guys here? The x and the y. Well, it's just the difference between these x's. So this snapping point has an x value. This uh, card that may be closest has an x value as well. Let's say this is x2. This is x1. This one also has a y value of y1, a y value of y2. It's just the difference between the two. So x2 minus x1 squared plus the y, not y squared, y2 uh, minus y1 squared, and then the whole thing square rooted. So we'll go here. We need an initial uh, shortest distance. Sh shortest distance. And we can pick any card we want. We just need something initial. We can't put zero, or else that would be the shortest distance. So we have to pick any of these cards to start as the shortest distance, and then we compare all of the the card distances to that card. So math dot square root. Let's do this square root. And we just need an X and a Y. Get this thing off the screen. No, not there. So we'll just choose the uh, third guy. So group cards dot children. We'll do three dot get world position dot X minus that snap point X. So minus snap point dot x and this whole thing is going to be a math dot pow raised to two or squared and we're going to have a plus here let's do this copy paste plus the y value get world position dot y snap point y squared so that's the initial shortest distance and we need to keep track of which card actually has the shortest distance so let me just Put the variable up here. We'll just say let active cards index equal zero. So let's go on to create that loop and actually compare the distances. So for let i equal to zero, i is less than the group cards dot children dot length. We'll say i plus plus. And we'll do we we'll split this guy into three lines or two lines. So it's just gonna be a crummy like this. So let me just copy these. Paste them down here. We'll say let dx equal that. And we'll say let dy equal this. And then we'll say the current distance. Current distance is equal to math.square root of dx plus dy. And the if conditional, so if the shortest distance is greater than or equal to the current distance we're comparing it to, then we know the shortest distance is not the shortest distance. So we're going to change it. So shortest distance is equal to current distance. And of course, we save which card has this shortest distance. We'll just say the active cards index is equal to i. And these guys should be i as well, not 3. i and i.
So before we move on, let's check if this actually works. We're going to console.log the active cards index. There we go. And let's just console.log the shortest distance. Shortest distance as well. We'll save. We go back. So let's go back here. Let me do an F5 first. Let me spin the wheel. And what do we get? We get seven and seven and four hundred. Closest card seven. That doesn't seem right. Which card is seven? Do an inspect here. Inspect. Let's go where are we at? I guess we can't do that. That doesn't seem right. Seven and four hundred. What's going on? That's way too high. It should be something like three or four pixels. Mm, oh, okay, there we go. Snap point Y, or excuse me, the group card Y. The snap point should be Y, not X. That's Y, and that should be Y as well. Save, spin, snap back. There we go. It's much more reasonable. So the closest card is a three, and it really should put different images so we can see, but we'll go on faith. So the closest card is the third index, so zero, one, two, three, and it is 67 pixels from the snap point, which is 90 degrees right here. So next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the uh, the difference in theta or the angle, so we know how much to rotate the the wheel by. And so how do we do that? Well, this is going to get a bit messy. Let me clear. Now we'll just move it. So just like when we had the two, let me just draw this example again. So we had a purple snap point here, and we had a green closest card here. And we did a loop to see which, which uh, card was closest by using the X and Y. This guy right here, the Pythagorean theorem, we need the X and Y. We had the H. How do we know the angle difference between these two? Well, if we know the X and Y, so this guy has an X and a Y. This guy also has an X and a Y. If you know the X and Y of a triangle, you can get the theta or the degree this point here. Just like if we knew the angle here, we get the X and Y with the uh, the cosine of that angle is equal to the X, the sine of that same angle is equal to Y. We can say that the tan or the inverse tangent of Y over X is equal to your, your theta. So we're going to go into the code. We're going to, tr going to calculate the snapping points theta. We're going to calculate the closest cards theta. And then we're just going to take the difference between the two. So theta 2 mi minus theta 1 should give us the theta in between. So we need to start by, let's get the snap points theta. So we'll just say, we'll do this snap point. Will that allow us to do? I don't know if that'll cause an error because I did a const. It shouldn't. Snap point dot theta is equal to, we'll take the absolute value of math dot a tan 2, which is the exact same thing as tan to negative 1 or inverse tan. a tan 2 of y over x. So snap point dot y and snap point dot x. So we have the theta or the degree of the snapping point. We need the theta or the degree of the uh, the closest card, and we know the closest card's index right here, so let's calculate that here. Let's do three separate variables. We'll say let closest, and it should be const. Const closest cards x is equal to something here. Const closest cards y is equal to another thing. And then finally, const closest cards theta is equal to something else. And so what's the X? It's just that get world position business. So group cards, dot children, and we have the active card by index. Ooh, not curly braces. We need these square brackets. There we go. Dot get world position, dot X. And the Y is the same thing. Group cards, dot children, active, get world, dot Y. And the theta is the same thing. Math, dot abs, math, dot A10, two. And we'll do the closest cards y over the closest cards x. So we have the theta of the closest card. We have the theta of the snapping point. Let's just do a const of theta between. Between. And a bit of math here. Not too much, but how do we know? So how do we know what to subtract from what? What is theta 2? What is theta 1? Well, on our circle, if the... Uh, 
go here. Let's choose red. Red, 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 red. There we go. Let's see the snapping points here and the card, closest cards here. If we did the, let's just say, what is this? let's say 90, 180, this says 160 degrees. Let's write that a bit neater. 160 degrees, this is 180 degrees. So 160 minus 180 would be negative 20. 180 minus 60 is 120. So we're just going to go with if the snapping point is greater than the, uh, the closest card, then we'll take the snapping point minus the greatest card. Else if the snapping point's here and the closest card's here, then we want to have the, uh, the closest card minus the snapping points card there. So let's do it like this. We'll say snap point. If the snap point theta is greater than or equal to, what is equal to? The closest card's theta. Then we want to do a snap point theta minus the closest card's theta. Else, we'll just do the reverse. We'll do closest card's theta minus the snap point dot theta. And so now I'm going to copy and paste some code because it's a, it's a bit of a pain to write. I'll explain it once I've copied and pasted it. All right, so I've copied and pasted this piece of code. It looks complicated. Uh, it's really not that complicated. All this code does is, um, because of the way the wheel's set up in, in JavaScript, or Canvas, it's set up in quadrants. Let me do this. Should I clear this canvas? Yeah, we'll clear it. Can we clear? There we go. So because of the way the wheel's set up in JavaScript, let's see if we have a thing here. We have quadrants. We have quadrant one, we have quadrant two, we have quadrant three, and we have quadrant four. Depending on where the snap point is and where the closest card is, if there's snap point here, closest card here, we want to rotate the wheel in a different direction. So if the if the snap point was here, closest card's here, we want to rotate the wheel in this direction. This would be a and so I did a negative. The natural motion of it would be a positive. So that'd be positive direction. If the snap point was here, the image was, I don't know, maybe here, we want a negative direction. And so all this if conditional structure does is it takes into account which uh, which quadrant we're in, and then it rotates the wheel uh, either counterclockwise or clockwise. And so now that we know if we're rotating either clockwise or counterclockwise, let's actually do that or set us up for that. What we're going to do is set a timeout, just like we set a timeout down here. So set timeout, and then we're going to set some variables in the timeout, which I'll explain when we get to them in a moment. So we'll do another 100 milliseconds, and we need to set some things. We need to set something called the target. So target's going to be that theta between. And then we need to set something called the wheel theta. Did I get a variable for that? Yeah, wheel theta. I have to create the target in a second. So wheel theta is just going to be equal to wherever the current position of the wheel is once it's stopped and it entered the snapping point uh, function, snapback function. So that would be the group cards dot rotation dot z, and then finally snap in progress. We'll set that to true, and so that target needs to be set here. So we're going to need some uh, some more variables to do the actual animating of the the uh, the wheel. So we're going to need a, let's do it down here by the animate. And we'll do it right, request frame, we'll do it here. So we need that target, let target equal zero for now. We'll need something called the clock. So let clock equal new three dot clock. That should be a cop, capital C. We need a delta zero, we need a duration. We'll set that to three for now, and we'll need the current time, which will set a default as the actual duration there. All right, so let's start off with doing, uh, doing this. I'm going to say if there is a snap in progress, we're going to run a little special animation in the animation loop. Also, if there's a snap in progress, we don't want them to be able to spin the wheel. So if snap in progress, we're just going to return, else we let them spin the wheel. Copy this out, or actually cut that out, put that here. A bit of formatting. All right, how do we get this thing to spin automatically for us? Well, we need the delta. The delta is just used to sync up with the, uh, basically the frame rate of whatever 
machine the user is using. So in the animate, we're going to say delta is equal to clock dot get delta. And in our snap in progress, we're going to have an if conditional. So if the current time, which is this guy right here up top, if that goes below zero, and I'll explain the math of this in a second. If current time is less than zero, then we know the, the wheel has finished snapping back. If not, we have to continue to snap back to the actual snapping point. And we do that by current time minus equal that delta. And so when this animation loop runs, it's continuously draining delta or the frame rate. Just think of it as a number that's continually increasing. It's continually draining that from current time until current time reaches below zero. And then we know we've snapped back successfully. So when the current time reaches under zero, we're just going to set some, some reset variables. So we're going to say current time is equal to duration. So reset the current time to our duration. You can think of this as three seconds if you want. So current time is equal to the, the, the default three seconds. We'll say snap in progress is equal to false. We're going to save the wheel theta. So it's going to be equal to the group cards dot rotation dot Z. Because we need to save how much the wheel rotated on its own by. And we're going to set the target to zero. Now comes the actual mathy stuff of how do you get the wheel to rotate. So we're going to say group.cards, or excuse me, group cards dot rotation dot set x of zero, y of zero, and the z is which we want to rotate on. So we're going to say the wheel theta plus the target times 1.0 minus the current time over the duration. And we need this in brackets as well. All right, so what is this line? All this math saying, is that properly bracketed? All right, so here, can I zoom out of it? There we go. So what we're saying is, let me move it over just a bit. All right, so we have some sort of wheel theta plus, we have a target, let's just say the target's five. And this is the important part here. It's times this equation right here. 1.0, or mechanism, 1.0, is this at times, 1.0 minus, the current time over the duration. What is this thing saying? Currently the current time, current time is three, duration is three. And we have this line right here, this current time minus equals delta. And so this numerator is ever increasing, excuse me, decreasing downwards. So this, uh, this fraction right here starts out at 100%. What is 1.0 minus 100%? Let's just th think of it as one. Well, it's equal to zero. Numerator decreases. Let's say this is 90%. What is 1.0 minus 90%? We'll let's just say that's 10%. So what we're doing here is instead of having a, a pattern where the percentage decreases, so this would be 100%, and then 2.98, whatever, be like 98%, and then 96, and then 95, 94, all the way down to zero. Because we're putting the 1.0 minus this fraction ever decreasing fraction, we're actually flipping the pattern. So instead of going down from 100%, we're going up from 0%. Now why is that important? Because we're multiplying it by 5. So what we're saying with this equation is, we have some sort of wheel theta, and we're adding 5 times 0%. What's 5 times 0%? It's 0. What's 5 times 10%? whatever five times 10% is. So we're, we're increasing or adding ever increasing percentages of the five. So let me just draw it geometrically. Maybe it'll make more sense. So let's say we have a snapping point here. We have the image here and we have where we start here and we have a theta, some sort of theta between. How do we get from the snapping point, or excuse me, the image to the snapping point? So this guy should be over here, not there. We start here, we wanna end up here. How do we get there? Well, let's just say that theta in between is the five. So we take 0% of five, we're here. 2% of five is here, let's say 4% of five is here. 10% um, is here, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%. So that's all this line is doing. It's adding ever increasing percentages of five until we get the whole five here, the whole, excuse me, the whole, uh, the whole theta right here. So let's save this and let's see if it works. F5, the snapping point is the 90 degree mark. We're gonna rotate 
Let me wait to 100 milliseconds and it should assign me to a const variable, which I thought would happen. 135 needs to be a let. All right. So we spin, wait 100, and we should snap back. And it's snapping back a bit too slowly. Let's do a duration of one second, R1. Save, go back, spin, and snap back. There we go. As you can see, the images are not rotating as well. We solved that earlier on by here, wheel rotating. Let's rotate the images in the opposite direction of the wheel. So rotation.z, we don't need rotation.z, we need rotation.set. And x, y, not y, zero. And we can just copy this stuff here. Yank, paste, and the opposite direction, we'll just do a negative one right here. Negative 1.0 times all of this stuff. It's a lot of brackets. All right, save, let's try again. The images should stay upright. And there we go. Now all that's left to do is make this card larger and maybe shrink these uh, these other cards. So I'm gonna copy and paste some code because it's a bit convoluted, but I'll explain it after I've copied and uh, pasted it. All right, so I've copied and pasted this code. All it does is, it looks complicated. So if I, so if we're on the active card, what we're going to do is we're going to scale the card up by the target of one here. This is the exact same math as this guy up here. We're using that same, uh, as this numerator goes down and this percentage goes down, we subtract it from one, so it's actually going up, so zero to 100%. We use that exact same mechanism, except the target is different. This target is the theta between, this target is just one, so this thing is going to go up by one, so a scale of one all the way up to like two. So we did that with the X, and again, it just looks convoluted. This is the scale.set. This is the X right here. That's the X value. This is the Y value here, and the Z value we're just keeping at one. And so if that's not the active card, if it's the other cards, we're just scaling it down by the target of, of 0 0.2 right here. 0 0.2 for your X, 0 0.2 for your Y, and we're keeping the one. So let's uh, see what that looks like. We're gonna spin the wheel, and there we go. So that's gonna be the, what is it, the advanced image wheel carousel for 3JS. It's a bit more complicated than the one for uh, React.js or JavaScript, mostly because of this math right here. That's probably the most complicated part of this, uh, this carousel. If you don't have a strong math background, it can be a bit confusing. But just understand, we just use this to increase from zero to 100 instead of 100. Uh, down to zero. Anyways, that's going to be the video. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next one.